Hey everyone, it's Jarman here with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be talking about a really fun topic. Uh, and I say fun because sometimes the clients and the agencies both have a little bit differencing of opinions. So I want to kind of break down how uh, smart shopping in particular, uh, which is for some reason my favorite topic, uh, but smart shopping in particular, how it actually affects your overall conversions and how to set a good return on investment inside of your Google Ads account to make sure you have an overall success in your marketing. Now, smart shopping is a huge campaign. It's inbound, it's outbound it, with dynamic prospect, prospecting, it's dynamic remarketing, it's on all six channels of Google. It is massive. So by spending a little bit of money, you can actually have a large impact on your business. And not only just from the clicks that you're seeing in Google ads and tracking them for 90 days, but Google is not going to be able to see every conversion. It's not going to be able to see the possibly the cross device conversion that someone, you know, opened up their phone at Starbucks, did a search, found your business, and then later on went home and then just opened up their laptop and then went to your site directly and converted or Google the brand name. You're not running a brand campaign. Um, so there's a lot of revenue that comes in that's not necessarily tracked or seen inside of Google ads. And I want to share with you how to identify that so that you can set a good return on ad spend knowing what's actually happening versus what Google ads is seeing that's happening. And so let's begin. What we have here is a client's account, and I'm going to be sharing with you just one of their campaigns. Um, on the top left, you'll see that it's actually blurred out just because we want to protect the privacy of the client. But here's what is very interesting is I'm sharing with you the Google Ads transactions and the purchase. Now, what you'll notice is we're not counting the Google Ads transactions as conversions. You can see them in all conversion value, but it's not affecting the overall value of the campaign. The purchase, which is the Google tag, which is what you want to be using, is going to see the actual revenue here. Um, and then you'll see, you know, zero revenue here. Now I say this cause I want to share with you what Google sees and what analytics sees, but what analytics isn't telling you that you can find elsewhere in analytics in order to set a return that's been goal. Now this client wants to be over 400% return that's been as much as possible. And you can see in the last seven days compared to the previous, previous seven days, we've spent $664. We made $2,500 in converted value for a return that's been of 388. Now this looks like, like it's below goal right? We're not hitting our goal yet. However, here's what you're not seeing. And we can see here that 2583, this is using the Google ads tag. It should be identifying everybody that came to the site from a click at any point in time. And then later on converted regardless of channel. Let me pull up the analytics. Here's their analytics. Now for the last seven days compared to the previous seven days, let me, let me share with you uh, the 15th through the 21st and the 15th through the 21st. And you can see it's compared to the previous period. It's exactly, you know, it's exactly the same metrics. Now what we're seeing in here is Google said, hey, you actually made 26% uh, more uh, return on spend because your overall conversion value increased by 25%. In reality, the overall revenue increased by 46%. That's a big jump. Now you can see paid search is increased by 25%. That's what your Google Ads is reporting. But organic search, that also increased by basically, <laughs> I don't even know what percentile going from zero to 195 is, but awesome. Went from nothing to something. Um, the direct had you know, another conversion and 141% more value. And then now you have other, and this is like your, your Facebook. Um, so that's not really necessarily affected by it. Uh, referral, this actually can be affected by it. A lot of times people are Googling coupon code companies and saying, is there any coupon codes for this, for this company that's available? So you'll see that actually started coming in as referral traffic. That's an additional source. Here's what I, what I can say about this is, um, in the other channel for this particular client, <laughs> What you're seeing is it's just Google. So this is also Google ads conversion. This is where sometimes uh, the source of like Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok or Pinterest would also be kind of falling into if it's not referral, it's gonna be another. We're only running one marketing channel for this client since I think like May. Um, there's been no other marketing besides Google, besides smart shopping. And that's why I think this is super important. This is isolated. It's not like, well, you know, you really can't count direct and organic and I can, and I'll show you how. Um, and that's what's interesting is you're actually only getting a little bit of the story from Google ads when overall, when you're running omni channel, now tools like Northbeam, it can actually help this. But when you're running omni channel, um, you're going to actually see that the revenue that's attributed to the paid and both your Google ads and your analytics is not always the full story. Um, again, we're early investors in Northbeam because we believe in it so much, but uh, this is uh, just not going to be a sales pitch in Northbeam. But um, because of this reason here, I want to make this video so that you can see, okay, if I'm making X, I need to know what else I'm also making from that campaign. So I can set possibly a lower return target return investment so I can scale this 
um, this campaign, knowing that I'm going to win in the end, the the either advertiser or company or both, you know, both. So here's what's interesting: is you see an increase in revenue and maximize conversion value in Google. Is it maximize conversions? Maximize conversion value, so you can actually have less conversions with a lot more conversion value. But what's interesting is three, four, three, seven. That's actually the total revenue that has come in from Google Ads for this last week. There's no other marketing. The organic search, there was no organic search before this. The direct, there was no direct users from this. This has to be left over from Google Ads. Well, how can you be sure? Well, if you go into the top conversion path since the last seven days, we can see that the paid search with two clicks, you got twice as many sales. Paid search to direct, got four more sales. The paid search to direct here, we well, got one more sale. The paid search to organic got one more sale. When you see organic and you see direct and you see direct and you see direct, when you see organic and direct and you see that paid search, which is Google ads was the first thing that was clicked on prior to them converting. You can see here that when you have direct sales like this, I already know these are already coming from Google ads first. So I can actually, I absolutely can include this revenue because Google Analytics is the same day, same attributed network. And this is why this is a bad idea to use Google ads as your conversion tracking, because you're going to miss, you know, conversions here and here and here. But also even Google tag still misses those. You can count on about 80% visibility inside of your Google ads account. So if you need to spend a dollar and you need to make five, set your goals of spending a dollar making four. And here's how this works. So if I look at the last seven days here, as an example, let me mute that, I pull out a calculator. I have 664. So just remember, let's just call that 665. So 665 is my cost. So would I look at 2,583 here to get a 388 ROAS? Or could I be looking at 3437? And remember, even uh, when we do have email sales, we got one last week, we didn't get this one this week. There's not a lot of email marketing going on, but the email list is growing from your Google Ads campaign. There's a all full circle. A lot of times, even your organic search of Googling your brand name comes from smart shopping, even pre-click. Why? Because if I'm going to be sending out weekly 210,000 impressions, it's not uncommon for a person to keep seeing the ads everywhere and just say, okay, I'm going to buy something and then pull up a new tab and then Google the brand name. Well, if you're not running a brand campaign, that's going to come in as organic. And Alex says, yeah, they clicked on an ad before. Google Ads says, yeah, they clicked on an ad before. And most of the time it will be counted, but not all the time. So you'll sometimes see that you're going to get just a direct conversion. You're like, well, that's weird. Someone just woke up one day and typed my URL in directly and had a 4% conversion rate on all that traffic. It doesn't happen. It has to come from somewhere. So looking at the top conversion path, looking at model comparison tools, those things will tell you exactly where that traffic is coming from. And now what do you set your ROAS goal to? Well, I know that if I made 3,437 divided, and again, this is in a vacuum because I know that all of the sales are coming from Google ads because that's the only thing marketing this site. Divide that by 665, well, now I've got a 516.8, so basically 517% ROAS. My 388% goal here is delivering me a 517% goal in reality. I need to be over 400. That's scalable. Client can confirm. We meet with the client weekly. The client weekly says, yep, you know, I'm, I'm making more sales. I'm having more revenue. There's more money physically in my hands. So it's not just like one marketer's like, oh, I don't think that the client's lying and blah, 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 blah. Um, no, this is actually happening. Client confirms it. It's been happening weeks over, weeks and months at a time. So what would you set a return on that spend goal? Would you spend, would you set it to 516, the 500? Well, you can, but then you're going to start to atrophy the campaign. It's going to say, wow, you're setting a really high goal. You might be able to get 700, 800% off a 500 goal. Your Google ads campaign might say a 500 goal. But if your Google Ads is 500 and you're getting 700, why are you stalling the campaign? You're setting a very high target for Google to reach, knowing that you're only going to give it possibly 80% of its conversions. Or actually, it's only going to give itself 80% of that conversion. So take into consideration everything that um, is going on instead of your Google Ads ecosystem. Understand the psychology of the human being and know how traffic flows. Not everyone that buys something waits to find an ad and see an ad and click on an ad and purchase. They are going to come back directly, organically. Uh, socially, referral, email, they're going to come back in many different ways. Google Analytics does a fairly good job at tracking in the top conversion path. Okay, they clicked on an ad and they went direct. Google Analytics is going to say you got a direct sale. Do you count those? Yes, you can tell by proof that they clicked on that first and then Google Analytics counted as a direct sale. Google Tag Manager may miss that. It may it may miss the GCLID because Google Tag is GCLID centric. All that is to say is that if you're going to set a goal of 
and you're getting 550, understand that, set your goals lower. If you need 500%, set 350. Sometimes, sometimes not. You have to understand, is that actually taking place in my account? And that's what I wanted to shoot this video on is how to find what's actually going on from high impression, high click campaigns that have sales cycles that are sometimes six, eight, 12, 18 days long. And understand that not every single person is going to say, you know what, I'm ready to buy. I hope I see a remarketing ad today. <laughs> so I'm John Moran here with Solutions 8. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the fun stuff, tell your grandma. Uh, and I really appreciate it. I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know we actually know what we're doing. We shoot a video every single day. So if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any input, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We get very little human interaction. Thanks for supporting our channel, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.